Hey all, Lori here from Lori's World. I wanted to tell you, I'm here to make another meal for you. I hope you enjoy. This is homemade chicken nuggets, okay? So, to make it short, I got some chicken thighs. Just a small pack, it's just for two. You can get a family pack, you can use breast, you can, whatever meat you want, including even pork chops, I guess, if you want it. But this is with chicken thighs, skinless chicken thighs. I cut them up into cubes. I also got trimmed off the excess fat. That way, you know, you don't want to be chewing on all this extra fat stuff. So I got that trimmed. All right. You're going to pick whatever you want. I'm going to use my bourbon uh, brown sugar and my season salt. Already. It's a meat tenderizer. It's already covered. So after you've seasoned your meat, you can use cream. You can use whatever you want. I'm going to use some milk. And I'm just going to soak these in the milk until I'm ready to cook them. So that it absorbs all that milk and it, it helps to tenderize. In case you didn't know that putting in a liquid, some, my steaks, I used to do Thousand Island dressing. Because Thousand Island, it does tenderize some steaks. Especially the thicker steaks. Now I try something else. I like my Hawaiian glaze or my teriyaki glaze or uh, the butter. You know, whatever else you use, your taste evolves. So use what you want. For me today, for this recipe, I'm using milk. All right, so they've been sitting. They did absorb a lot of the milk. Then I drained the excess out. I took a bowl with flour, just all purpose. You could use the cracker crumbs. You could use bread crumbs, whatever crumbs or spreading that you like. Today, I'm just using all purpose flour. I've seasoned it with the same stuff I seasoned the chicken with, the same seasonings, because you want to make sure it's done. I'm just going to save time. I already got a bowl dirty, right? So I'm going to shake it all around, and I'm just going to coat all of the chicken pieces. While I'm waiting on my pan to heat up. So, I didn't put a lot in, but I'm using olive oil. Because sometimes olive oil is so much better. It's healthier for you, but it also tastes better than regular vegetable oil or sunflower oil. Or vegetable grease. Whatever you choose to cook with, it's your choice. Olive oil, personal choice. For some. Some foods, I do take regular. So, now, to test it, to see if it's hot enough after... I, you're going to take a little bit of water and you're going to splash. If it sizzles, then you know. I'm just going to add a little bit more because my center, the way the pan's going, it was taking it away. So, let me get my water. Nope, no sizzle. So, it's still got to take a minute. So, tonight, simple. I'm just going to make some macaroni and cheese as a side dish. But, once again, your choice. Salad, fruit potato, whatever you want. It's just macaroni and cheese. It's an easy dinner. I got my stuff out. I have a pan. I lined it with some thick paper towels. And I'm going to turn my oven on when they start cooking to about 175. Because when they're done, I'm just going to stick it in the oven and let them stay warm while I finish up getting everything else ready and we're ready to go. The paper towels just to soak off, soak up any excess grease and oil that would be left over when I take it out of the chicken. But after you've done that, you got all your chicken in there, pull that paper towel out or you're going to have sticky paper towels sticking to your food. You don't want any of that. All right, oven, the pan was hot. I put it all in there. I start on the outside. I don't usually do the center because if your stove is like mine, the center of the burner gets very hot. So the pan, it cooks too fast in the middle. And I want them to come out as close to being done around the same time. So all I'm going to do... It won't take long because it's already cut up into tiny little pieces, plus it's skinless and boneless. So, of course, it's going to cook a lot faster than normal fried chicken was. So, we're going to let that cook for a minute. So, I started checking, and once they hit a golden brown, I'm going to start flipping, as you can see. Okay? Because, like I said, it's not going to take long, and you don't want to dry your chicken out. And you can also judge where your oven is or your pan is the hottest, which chicken is not getting cooked as fast, and then you can rotate accordingly and bring the other pieces that didn't get as crispy to begin with, bring them into the center or in the, around the edges that you saw was already heating a little faster. You know your pan better. You know how your stove works better than anybody else. So just go with your instincts, what you think. That's the best thing to do. As you know, you gauge what your meat temperature is for you. 
It's all personal preference. You just don't want any pink on chicken because you can get sick. And that is the downfall sometimes of cooking with real chicken is you got to know your food. So, let that finish up. All right, rule of thumb, so you know when they're about done, is if you can go all the way through and it's firm, if they're done. If they're still a little slimy or like hard to puncture, that's usually a rule of thumb they need to cook a little bit longer. It's got that nice thick, see? All right, turn my oven off. Put my lid. Now, here's a little trick that I do, okay, with my chicken. So, it's in its pan, okay? I know that you're going to think this sounds weird, but it's not. Trust me, unless you try it, don't knock it. When it's done, I'm just going to sprinkle just a thin level of honey over the chicken. That's it, just a thin level. I got my oven set at 175, okay? I'm going to put these in on the top shelf just to keep warm till we're ready to eat. And there you have it. Simple recipe to make your own homemade nuggets. There's more to come, though. I've got some secret stuff I'm about to show you that makes it even better. Okay, I'm going to make you homemade honey mustard. A nice dipping sauce for your chicken nuggets or any other thing that you want for honey mustard. Okay? You're going to judge this based on your own taste, okay? I'm usually going to do about seven or eight squeeze, squeezes of the bottle. <laughs> I don't measure, as you can tell. Just about that. I might have to make more, but for now, then I'm just going to put my own big old dollop of honey mustard. And then you're just going to stir it all around. You're going to look for a golden brown, not the yellow from the mustard, okay? Now, you could like yours a little with that zip from the mustard, or you could like it a little sweeter where you taste majority honey, or like us, we like it right in the middle. See how that's changing colors from that bright yellow to a richer pale? Okay, let's see. Now. Woo, still a little kick from the mustard. So you're just going to keep stirring it all. Get it all, especially in the corners of your bowl. You want to get all that zesty mustard out. And mustard's your choice. We prefer yellow. You can do grape poupon if you want to get all fancy. You can use the spicy mustard, you know, whatever mustard you want, any brand that you want. There you go. Simple homemade honey mustard. No muss, no fuss. And you've got a great dipping sauce that goes great with anything you want honey mustard for. And that, my friends, is what a homemade chicken nugget honey mustard sauce with just a side dish of macaroni and cheese looks like. Bon appetit. Everybody dig in and enjoy. For this recipe and more, hope to see you at Lori's World.